Hey guys, this is Coach Carly, and you're watching Bull Time. Sweet. So we are here for another episode of Bull Time with Coach Carly. Uh, we are in October uh, of 2022. Uh, crazy to think, I didn't mention it last month, but we are a year now of doing the Bull Time reviews. So, um, you know, I'm kind of not going to post the full things on Instagram anymore. I'm only going to post like the first snippets of the intro, um, kind of give you a brief uh, overview of like what we're going to be talking about and then you know you'll have to head to the YouTube channel and uh, you know check it out from there um, but yeah a uh, year of doing it uh, last September last month September of 2022 was uh, made a full year so uh, that was super dope super happy that we've been doing this giving back to our clients and and giving back to the people that invest in us which is which is awesome so october of 2022 was uh crazy um a really wild you know it's kind of been ever since the wedding just been fucking going 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 um i literally have we had eight meets um in the month of october for our client uh, my clients that have competed uh which is crazy to think about you know we had multiple weekends where we had multiple meets going on um yeah just absolutely bonkers uh to me that you know in one weekend we had in two weekends alone we had six total meets in two different weekends which is just crazy to think about so uh we had a strongman meet we had a weightlifting meet and we also had i think four no no six powerlifting meets and one international meet which is uh super dope we had to go to world so we'll get to that probably last um since that was the big one so i'll go over the um the two non-powerlifting stuff first um so first up we had Miranda Schaefer doing a strongman meet down in Texas with heavy metal barbell uh, down there, heavy metal fitness, excuse me. Um, yeah, just honestly, uh, she killed it. Um, Miranda and I were working together probably for about a good nine months leading up to that. And she absolutely killed it. Um, you know, a lot of life ups and downs, you know, a lot of making sure that she can be consistent. I know we started with just a very raw base. Like we didn't really do much. Like it was mostly just strength training, to be honest with you. It was mostly like, uh, getting her back into the swing of things of, of actually lifting. Um, and then, you know, finally getting our bearings back once that like was jiving and, you know, everything was, uh, working uh, and complying with her life. Then we started adding more things in there. Then we got a little bit more strongman specific, but she absolutely crushed her meat. Um, we accomplished some goals that were super dope. Um, I think she placed first place in this uh, meet for her, which made her nationally qualified after that, which is awesome. Um, accomplished doing a long clean and press at 130 pounds, which is something that she's never done before. Deadlift ladder all the way up to 350, um, which is awesome. Uh, probably had a couple more pounds in the tank. Um, placed first in the yoke medley um, and sandbag medley. So just uh, really crushed uh, her competition. I'm super happy for her. Mostly, I mean, mostly happy as, as most people know me as a coach. A lot of it is person first, athlete second, you know, and, and I still hold true to that forever, uh, regardless of what sport that you do, um, you know, and she deserved, um, you know, all of the glory for what she was able to do life-wise in addition to, you know, how the meets and stuff went for her, so in competition, so. The other one we had was Christine Abrams, uh, AKA Matt's girlfriend, but also Christine Abrams, because I knew Christine actually, I think, before I knew Matt, uh, which is super funny. Um, Christine and I go way, way, way back. Um, she was absolutely on a tear, uh, absolutely on a tear um, leading up to the COVID shutdowns and then fucking COVID shutdowns happened and her body just shut down. Um, you know, multiple back injuries, dealing with whatever hernia, hip, abdomen, issue she was having um, that I don't even know if we 
clearly got an answer on what was wrong. We just figured out how to, you know, stabilize that area. And, and a lot of credit to Matt, a lot of credit to Brian Geller, a lot of credit to um, her boss at the pelvic floor PT place um, and got her back to lightly strength training. And then once, you know, our mantra was, can you do a week? Can you do two weeks without pain? Can you do three weeks? The moment we got to about three to four weeks without pain, then we talked about, and this was uh, slowly incorporating weightlifting movements, slowly incorporating um, just regular strength training movements. And once we got to a point where she was three to four weeks without any pain, minimal shifting, minimal thinking about shifting, we slowly uh, started programming again. And that was like, maybe four months ago. Um, so it's been a long two and a half years of figuring out what's going to work for her. And what we did was absolutely insane. Like, so you talk about someone who is at a really good place, cleaning and jerking 80 kilos, snatching 67 kilos, you know, getting really strong, getting close to building that total to be like an AO open finals type total uh, in the near future. And uh, yeah, a major, major setback. So to, to come back and perform how she did at uh, a five for six performance, um, seven kilo, 90, total 95% of her best ever total, seven kilos less than her best ever um, is just, fucking insane so uh minimal work we're talking you know under 25 reps of squats a week under you know no real heavy complexes a lot of pulls not a lot of double cleans like we we really did the what i would call the bare minimum in workload um in order for her to compete and she just absolutely crushed it so i'm super happy we're gonna get back to programming next week and and really see um what her body um you know can do and if we can push it a little bit more you know we were working out like three days a week maybe like 45 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes at tops um, each session um not really pushing it staying in true um true uh you know uh, the moment you feel something's not right limit shut it down or do something else so i um, happy and pumped to see what we can do moving forward um yeah so that makes up the two that weren't uh, a part of uh, the normal powerlifting bull time that you normally see. So I do coach other athletes, although I know most people don't think, uh, you know, all we do is coach powerlifters, but uh, we do coach a couple others, which is awesome. Uh, so first up, as I was alluding to in the year in, in September 22 uh, bull time, it was a year of the dudes, man. Uh, Matt Spore um, crushed his meat. Uh, he did the USA Powerlifting Penguin Classic up in Pittsburgh, um, nationally qualified lifter nine for nine performance first time ever 10 kilo total pr finally made weight um this was matt and i's fourth or fifth meet together and we finally made weight we finally hit a high enough qualifying total he finally has the bearings underneath him he hit 765 at 106 um just absolutely phenomenal lifting i'm super pumped about what he's able to do um we finally figured out a formula for his bench uh we finally figured out a formula for his deadlift um and his squats always been so fucking on point for for competition stuff so super happy for him uh we're taking a very very slow approach to uh what we're going to do for nationals but i'm so happy to finally see him um going to memphis in the respective weight class that he should be in so that's awesome uh, next up, we had the USA Powerlifting Stay in the Lane Thrasher that I hosted and I ran uh, here at the gym, uh, which was super awesome. Uh, really good meet. We had like 30, 30 peeps uh, competing. Um, super small meet. Again, I had to go to Worlds literally that evening. So um, I needed it to be a smaller meet. So I'm glad that uh, everything could oblige accordingly. And I got out of here in plenty of time. Um, but yeah, uh, we had a really good showing. I had zero first time lifters, which is 
kind of crazy to me. Uh, that had zero first time lifters, which uh, is good to see a lot of routine lifters back on the platform. I think the uh, youngest amount of people um, it, earliest, I guess, in their powerlifting career, uh, I had uh, third meet was the earliest, so that was kind of cool. First up on my list, uh, we had Jennifer Smith uh, competing. Um, you know, I love Jen. Um, Jen and I have a very special relationship, and uh, she knows this, and I know this, that she is 100% strong enough to do the lifting. Um, physically strong enough to do the lifting. You know, a lot of what we work on is being in the moment, being able to handle the moment, and being able to uh, embrace the strength that you have and not allowing it to crush you and crumble you mentally. Um, and I think that where we are uh, in our lifting, you know, unfortunately that moment became just too much at that time and so it's something that you know we're for still working on i still tell her every single day regardless of whatever weight class that you choose you are still strong enough to, in order to to get to that national level so um i still hold true to that i don't just i don't not think that she is um you know, I think that it's a smart decision for her to keep pursuing the, the 90 class for right now. Um, and I think that, you know, I do that until she feels like it's not a good idea for her. And, you know, obviously working through everything else, um, I think that we have a good plan of attack leading into uh, what can be the next stage for her. And then next up we had Ange Malhotra. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right, Ange. I apologize if I butchered your name. Uh, Ange went uh, eight of nine, hit 89% of her lifts, 10 kilo total PR, qualified for collegiate Nats. Uh, that was the main goal here, was to get a meet under our belt again, to uh, hit a QT for, for collegiate Nats, and I'm super pumped. We did exactly what we had. A little bit of miscue on the bench. We took a risk, you know, could have been a 12 and a half kilo uh, total PR, uh, left a lot of room in the squat, which is awesome. Uh, always good to see that she leaves room in the squat. Um, depth was always an issue, but it wasn't that day. Um, she hit awesome depth there. Just lost a little bit of weirdness on the bench. Uh, we took a risk trying to hit a PR there. Um, we're still trying to build. You know, I feel like we finally found a groove for her in the bench uh, to finally have good positioning on there. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, you know, just didn't hold true in competition, which is fine, shit happens. Next up, we had Miss Alicia Bill, another QT for uh, junior and collegiate nationals. Uh, although Alicia just accepted her invite to primetime, so she'll be competing in January, which is fucking awesome. Um, Alicia and I have absolutely crushed both of our competitions that we have done together. She has gone 18 for 18 with a total of 75 kilo total PR between both the meets that we've done together, which is absolutely insane. Regardless of body weight, um, she is absolutely crushing it. Um, yeah, I'm just amazed at what she's able to do as a junior, as a collegiate athlete. So uh, really pumped for her, really happy about what we did uh, going nine for nine again. Next up we had Peggy Miski. Peggy, uh, <laughs> Peggy finally put together the squats. Uh, she finally, I think that this was personally, in my opinion, Peggy's best meet as a whole. Um, hit a bench PR, hit uh, you know another 300 pound deadlift on the platform, but was so confident in the squats. And that's something that you know we worked on post nationals to become extremely accepting of who we are in the squat and just being that person. Um, and she finally actually did that. She finally actually um, went three for three on the squats. Um, super pumped for her, I'm, I'm just elated. So really good job for her, pretty, I'm super pumped about how she did. Next up we had Eston Watt. Eston uh, crushed it again. Uh, at, you know, for being 15 years old, this was Eston's sixth meet, uh, which is super awesome. Qualified for high school nationals. Um, went eight for nine, seven and a half kilo total PR. I'm so excited to see what we can do down in Myrtle Beach. Just uh, absolutely, absolutely smashed it. 
Uh, then next up we had Melissa Tranquilli. Uh, Melissa, nine, uh, nine for nine performance, five kilos less than her best ever total, but she was also six kilos lighter this meet. Uh, and another thing, kind of like I talked about with Peggy, same thing with Melissa. Melissa, um, you know, being confident at this lower body weight uh, was something that we've been working on for a while. And uh, I think that it finally came through in her lifting. So that to me was super awesome to see that um, her on the platform and just owning every fucking lift that she had. Um, that was awesome. Next up, we had Lindsay Judgets. Oh, Lindsay, I <laughs> love Lindsay to death. Uh, Lindsay and I, you know, we had our recap and we weren't seeing uh, eye to eye right away about uh, the meat performance. And I thought she had an absolutely perfect meat. And, you know, I also, you know, think as um, what I think that she's capable of doing, you know, doesn't always line up with, I think, what she wants to do. Um, and that's normal with a lot of athletes, but you know, when when she's expressing post meet that she wants to hit these goals as a junior, um, you know, I take I want to take that in consideration. And now knowing that that's like a main mission for her, I'm excited to see what she can do at prime time, and uh, uh, I want to give her that opportunity to have that happen. Um, you know, it, it's a good talking point to to say that I do listen to all of my athletes and I want to listen to the feedback about what you want as well you know and I also sometimes you know when we we are just in this meet mode where we're just going meet to meet to meet to meet I um, sometimes don't express what the goals are as much because I just kind of assume that, you know, when we're, when we're going to these things, I think that, um, you know, you just kind of know off the back of your hand. But, you know, sometimes I just need to express like, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And, you know, unless you ask, sometimes I'm just silly and I, I don't express those things as much, uh, you know, like, um, but, we talked about it. We know what the mission is. We know what we're trying to do. I know what she wants. Uh, she knows what uh, my vision is for her. So I'm super happy about how she did. She went nine for nine, 12 and a half kilo total PR, finally uh, above the 500 kilo mark, hitting five, 12 and a half. And, you know, as a, as a junior lifter, that's uh, absolutely insane for, for her weight class. Next up, we had Brie Abbott. Uh, Brie went seven of nine. Um, smashed a bench PR. Uh, we had a very stressful prep, uh, life stress, you know, getting in the way here. Uh, we had such a fucking amazing meet coming into, um, coming into, uh, you know, nationals. And when this meet, this meet prep started so well, like we were, uh, everything was driving, everything was cruising and then life happens, you know, like you can't, you can't uh, write the script to always have life just comply with you. And, and unfortunately it didn't uh, for the back half of our prep and we made the most of it. <clears throat> I think that we made, um, you know, the right calls. I wouldn't change anything that we did. And I, I still wanted to give her a shot of doing all those things. Just sometimes things happen. So uh, that's life. Um, whatever it, it is what it is we come back uh it's not like she's not um a good lifter at all like we had a, we still had a fucking amazing me it just wasn't as stellar as it was at nationals and shit happens next up we have mr kagan smith oh kagan i i am so proud of this fucking kid um fuck he he absolutely smashes me. He only missed his opening deadlift because he forgot um, to wait for the down command, I think, or something like that. He he didn't get a lift because of something silly, um, but he absolutely crushed it. He, he exceeded far expectations of what of what I think I even set out for him. We pushed his deadlift and it was so easy. Um, he went eight for nine with a 57 and a half kilo total PR, still qualified for for um, high school nationals. I'm just so proud of him. He qualified in like three or four different weight classes. So that's how strong that he got. Also, I forgot to mention Melissa, Lindsay and Bree also still qualified for nationals. So uh, they're all uh, re can register for raw nationals.
Next up, we had Mr. Richard. Uh, Richard uh, went nine for nine, 30 kilo total PR. He finally sank all of his goddamn squats. Uh, like, come on. Uh, he, he absolutely had a fucking amazing day. So happy for him. Um, I think <clears throat> Richard, I always joke with Richard that he always thinks everything is way too heavy. And even at the meet, he thought everything was way too heavy, but he absolutely killed it. So how, uh, who am I to sit here and say that it wasn't heavy enough, I guess. Um, <clears throat> Next up, we had Mr. Jordan Fuentes. Jordan back on the platform after a long hiatus. Uh, this was his first prep that he was like absolutely healthy for. Um, had a phenomenal fucking meet, uh, had a phenomenal day. Eight for nine, seven and a half kilo total PR, just missed his last bench. Uh, sometimes Jordan back, Jordan's back uh, just gets a little bit too tight and unfortunately he um, you know, it just can't fire in the bench, so um, it didn't that day, and we just managed what we could. And that's why we ended eight for nine with seven and a half kilo total PR instead of nine for nine and a little bit more. Um, and lastly, we had Mr. Greg Guylog. Uh, Greg fucking killed it. He went nine for nine, 20, 22 and a half kilo total PR. Uh, smashed his day, smashed. Um, a squat PR, smashed a deadlift PR, smashed, uh, tied his best bench. Um, just great, great, great execution day for him. I'm really happy after uh, what happened at, um, you know, the summer meet, and, or excuse me, at, um, you know, the, the junior Nats and stuff. And I think this was a really good comeback for him. So I'm really happy about how he performed in that day. I'm going to skip over what we did for Worlds. I want to. I want to talk a little bit more about um, you know other meets first before we get into the big, big one. Um, so next up we had uh, Carolina Primetime, which was fucking dope. Um, so that weekend uh, we had three different meets. Uh, Matt, Zach, and I uh, were all in different places of the country, which is super cool. Uh, I was in South Carolina for Carolina Primetime uh, with Ariel Patra and Olivia Gadone and. Um, yeah, uh, both lifters fucking killed it. First, we'll start with Ariel. I mean, Ariel went nine for nine, 25 kilo total PR, you know, top, I think like 10 all time, 52 and a half, uh, or 52, yeah, 52 and a half kilo. Um, best female total, you know, um, this year in USAPL alone, I think that ties her for third or something like that, third or fourth. Um, <clears throat> just, an, just a crazy, crazy good meet for her um, again needed needed a good meet i think you know after the fallout from nats um you know with the unfortunate bombing out in june um we learned a lot about each other we learned about how to execute we learned that you know we're just going to follow the plan we're going to we're going to talk about the plan we're going to follow the plan we're going to see what's there it's not about number chasing it's just about execution of the platform uh and execution of the day and she absolutely crushed her prep she absolutely crushed her um execution i am just thrilled at what she gave uh, to herself and I think that you know this was a huge not only mental win for her but so much mental maturity that went into this meet for her and how she executed um, everything so yeah just couldn't be more pleased for Olivia we finally got redemption uh, two different types of redemption nine for nine 15 kilo total PR um, I think elevated herself to a potential you know top 10 at, at nationals kind of performance for her um, in the in the 75 kilo class <clears throat> For Olivia, you know, redemption of she had a back injury that put her out of naps and uh, really sad that we went through that, you know, but I think that helped her, helped her grow. I think this was the meat that she needed, meat that she wanted and meat that she needed uh, for her to, you know, solidify herself and feel like, yeah, I am a strong fucking lifter. Um, and, you know, redemption that she's always missed her third dent, you know, and, and going out there and executing something that I think was the appropriate weight for what we did leading up to that day. Just awesome. I couldn't have asked for anything more. It was a phenomenal meet, a uh, phenomenal RAN meet as well. Great, great, great local meet. Uh, I can only hope to, to emulate that when we run New York primetime in January. Uh, and then next up we had uh, Dana 
Bloomfield out in Tennessee at the Ogre Fall Classic, uh, USA Powerlifting Ogre Fall Classic. So that was awesome. Uh, Zach was out there in Tennessee with her. Uh, Dana went six for nine, seven and a half kilo total PR. Had a miscue on the squat, shit happens. Uh, I heard uh, from Zach and Dana that she held uh, held that bench a little bit longer than I think she anticipated on, on the pauses, uh, but we still managed to have a seven and a half kilo total PR, which I think uh, was brought to you by some of the bench, some of the deadlifts, and I think we tied or did a little bit less in the squat, but uh, I know that we can come back and hit a uh, phenomenal meet here um, the next time that I think she's gonna do the Atlanta Open or something like that, so that'll be awesome. And then last up, before we get to the world stuff, uh, we had Adrian Lockhart back on the platform after a long hiatus, uh, competing in the Powerlifting America Elite Season Classic. Uh, Matt Veronica handled Adrian and she went uh, nine for nine, 10 kilo total PR. And this was honestly like <laughs> a tune-up meet for us. Uh, we didn't really expect to PR anything, but I was watching a little bit of the live stream when I was um, there in, in South Carolina and I was, Matt made all the right calls and left a lot of room in the squat, left a lot of room in the bench. I even tried to push the deadlift at 170 kilos, give her a PR there, PR in the squat, PR total. And uh, even 170 was fucking smoke. It was easy. It was super fucking easy. So um, we sandbagged the bench a little bit. Saving her shoulder, she's going through something after she uh, uh, competed in a, or excuse me, participated in a uh, Spartan run. So we're just coming back from that, but it was a fucking amazing day for her. I mean, the whole month of October was just simply awesome. Uh, I really, really couldn't complain at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, lastly, we had IPF Masters Worlds in Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, I should say. Um, it was an honor. I mean, it, it, it was an absolute honor um, to have three of my own uh, personally coached athletes representing Team America to go to Worlds. Um, that's something I will never forget. You know, I'll never forget the fact that we had three of my own athletes at one individual World event. Um, you know, back in the day, we've had <clears throat> Sarah and Kelly both qualify for bench worlds in Pills in Czech Republic, but unfortunately, you know, life, um, COVID things got in the way of that. Um, we also had Brit Zaplicki qualify for um, uh, open worlds in Sweden, uh, Homstead, Sweden, and unfortunately some IPF bullshit that happened and, you know, we didn't get that opportunity to go showcase our, our talent, um, so that sucks. Uh, really, really did suck, but we finally got our masters uh, or an opportunity to go to Worlds. Um, so first up, we had Lynn Aronica. Uh, Lynn had a weird thing happen in the in the squat. She missed depth on her opener. Uh, we made a small jump, hit uh, hit depth, and then uh, we. Uh, missed our third on strength and you know weight cutting traveling those kind of things happen you know we we hit numbers in the gym and going out to the platform first time you know those things just didn't quite transfer and that's totally okay matched her best ever uh bench um in, in uh as 55 kilos so that was the right call uh went three for three there um went one for three on the squats and then we went uh into deadlifts and we uh i thought we were gonna go three for three with a two and a half kilo total pr but unfortunately the judges uh two and a half kilo total total pr uh but unfortunately the judges thought differently unfortunately they thought it was like up and down motion or something and um, whatever, I mean, the judging was extra hella strict, uh, and you'll understand what I mean when I talk about that with, uh, um, with Sarah, but yeah, it was, uh, kind of weird, um, things happen, you know, shit happens, it is what it is, um, but yeah, she won, she won gold in all of her events, which was fucking amazing, so we have our first ever world champion uh, at a at a world event so that was that's something i'll never forget uh next up we had kelly gibson bateman she went eight for nine did five kilos less than her best placed third um excuse me second at uh masters worlds <laughs> like just fucking insane um took uh 
um, gold medal in the squat, silver medal in the uh, in the bench, and placed fourth in the deadlift. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the number one person was just well out of reach. Uh, Kelly had a miscue and seemed like she shifted her weight back, locked tightness on the second squat attempt, uh, came back and absolutely fucking smashed her third. Uh, definitely had, you know, what our planned third was. Um, and then, yeah, executed everything to a T. Um, I mean, we just competed in June, so to be at that same total, that's kind of what I expected. Uh, maybe a little bit more if we had a little bit of an opportunity to reach, but uh, we didn't, and, you know, things happen, so um, I, I'm not going to overdo the plan, especially when people are nipping at your heels. So uh, we solidified silver place for her. Lastly, we had Miss Sarah Gavino. Uh, Sarah had uh, an interesting judging day. Got called for depth on her on her uh, one squat. Came back. We made a small jump. Smashed her third. Didn't uh, quite complete her last bench. Uh, again, weight cutting and everything going into this meet. You know, weight cuts um, are killers, especially in in older females. I feel like I feel the hu uh, uh, see a more of a drop off. Um, and then we had an interesting deadlifting experience where she was called for shoulders on her first and her second deadlift, and. That was super weird. Uh, we haven't been called for shoulders since 2017. Um, not even at nationals, not even at world. Well, I guess it was our only opportunity at worlds, but since Sarah has been to one 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, not 2020 because it didn't happen, but 2021. And she got called, uh, you know, seven years into this sport for her shoulders for the first time. Um, so that was weird. And that happened on both first and second. So it took placing out of the question, which is really fucking frustrating because if we <clears throat> don't get called on depth, which was an interesting call on the squat, we put, take our plan third. Um, <clears throat> and then we, you know, missed the bench, whatever. But then we go to our planned attempts on squat or excuse me on deadlift uh we could have had an opportunity to place third and that uh, but we actually placed fifth um and that really stunk and i you know um <clears throat> i really like to see sarah get back to what we had and strength wise it's just sometimes the judging doesn't like what they see and that's why it's a subjective thing even though it's objective so um really unfortunate that that happened for Sarah. Um, quick little side note, you know, uh, super happy that I'm surrounded by such a such a wonderful, beautiful team. Um, you know, between Mikey and Molly watching Jim while we're traveling, and Zach going down to Tennessee, Matt not only handling Adrian but flew down with me to Newfoundland because of you know IPF bullshit that I couldn't be back there, and and he absolutely did a phenomenal job. I. I couldn't have asked for anything more. He did everything that was expected of him. Matt's been with me for so long and and that was just super awesome. Uh, I couldn't have done it without my team. Uh, I couldn't have done this crazy hectic month without my team and um, I'm just super, super proud and super honored to be surrounded by such great people. Um, so huge thank you to those dudes for, for helping me out for this entire month and you know helping run the meet, Matt being in worlds with me, being the uh, masters, uh, the female masters handler for the mustache team, I guess, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, awesome. Super great for all of our athletes. I'm really proud of all of you guys and we'll see you in November. Cheers.